What's up, Sios Cats? Hope you guys are doing well. Trying a new setup today, so you can get a little bit <laughs> closer to all this fluffiness in my beard. I'm just kidding. Uh, let me know if you like this kind of setup better, where it's a little bit more closed in, less wide. Leave it down in the comments, let me know. I'm just kind of experimenting with some things. So, as I'm learning uh, how to do this better, you know, feedback is always appreciated. So thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, really happy to see you guys and to continue this project with Sios. It's uh, a lot of fun for me to do and, and I'm getting a lot of cool feedback from you guys on social media and all that stuff. Uh, and before we get started, make sure that we're all following Sios and myself on Instagram. Uh, Sios' ad is at Sios Music and mine is at RFD Jazz. Uh, I have a goal of trying to get to 10,000 uh, followers before the end of the year. Um, hopefully I can get there. Just want to get that logistical stuff out of the way before uh, we start the video. So uh, something I want to talk about today is how to play what you're hearing. I get a lot of questions on Instagram about, you know, I, I'm listening to a lot of stuff, but I never really understand how to get the playing of those players into my own playing. And, and I hear all these things, but I can't perform it on the saxophone or the piano or whatever. Uh, and this is something that I think every musician struggles with, at least that I know. Um, no matter what level you're at, you know, you always want to try and be able to play what you hear uh, and just, you know, be able to play at a cognitive level um, at all times. So something we're going to talk about that has to do with that is listening and active listening versus just listening, you know, to music uh, for enjoyment. Now, as a musician and especially as a jazz musician, I have a really hard time listening to things just for enjoyment. That's in the jazz idiom. Uh, I have a hard time listening to music while doing homework or listening to music while doing you know business stuff or even editing videos and stuff I have a really hard time doing that because I'm always trying to actively listen to uh, the music to try and learn from it or whatever it's just kind of a curse because I'm so used to that in my in my practice uh, now it's it's a great thing to do because active listening is a form of practicing right so if you don't have the horn you know uh, just being able to listen and, and hear out the, uh, whoever you're listening to's lines or phrasing or articulation without even having the saxophone, just cognitively getting around it, right? Uh, there's, I think there's two processes to coming and learning something. It's one to understand it and then it's another to put it on the horn. And the more hours that you have on the horn, uh, the easier that it should be to understand and then put on the horn. So if you can understand it, you're kind of getting one process out of the way. So I was listening to this uh, really cool Steve Grossman recording. I've been getting into Steve Grossman and he's playing soprano and he plays this line. I'm going to put it uh, or a couple lines. I'm going to put up the solo, not the transcription, just the audio. Uh, and we can listen to it together. And I'm going to try and show you guys my process of transcribing it in pieces and then trying to put it in my playing because this is kind of what I'm hearing right now in this uh, in this climate of Ryan's practice. So here we go. Okay, so if you're not familiar with uh, Steve Grossman or um, you know the 70s kind of funk fusion modal kind of thing, Steve Grossman is a very big uh, Coltrane, post Coltrane player, very much in the style of like Michael Brecker and, and he came before Michael Brecker. Michael Brecker said that he was a big influence, Grossman was a big influence on him. So I started checking him out more and he plays this insane uh, solo on this uh, Miles Davis tune called Little High People. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of take through parts of the solo that I really want to put into my playing and then kind of show you the process of what I do without my horn and then what I do with my horn as we go through the solo. <laughs> That line right there is one that I really want to get in, so get into my playing. So I'll kind of scrub back a little bit. So that that line right there, I don't know, it's about maybe eight seconds. Let me see. And what I'll do is I'll listen to it. Uh, you know, a good amount of times, and then I'll try and piece it part by part, so... You know, 
know, even simple three note things that can take a little while, depending on how, how on my ears are. <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to learn this real quick so I don't have to do this over video. And then once I learn the lick, I will show you how I implement it into my playing based on what I'm hearing. Six hours later. Okay, after a few moments, <laughs> many moments, of doing that little line, I got it. So. You know, so now I can feel that that, I mean, the, the, the vamp is like G7 or D minor, some, something like that, I can't even remember exactly. But now what I do is I set up like a practice vamp of some, of some kind, either on like a cello drone or, um, you know, a vamp tune like Impressions or something like that, and I use it my speaker here. And I'll, I'll do Impressions. And I'll kind of experiment around with the lick, see if I can add it to other things or, And that goes back to my first video about etude writing and connecting phrases, right? So I'm taking little spurts from transcribed solos and then adding them to my language that I already know, putting it over a vamp or a tune, and then you experiment until you find a sound that you really like, and you know, you just kind of keep going from there. And I'm obviously gonna transcribe this whole solo here, probably on soprano, because it's a little bit easier, <clears throat> just pitch-wise. But that's like one little line that I can take a, a ton of different ways, just from those little shapes in there. And all these Coltrane-esque things are very uh, symmetrical, so they'll work in a lot of different contexts, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's my little uh, transcribe listening kind of uh, lesson for today. I would say really focus on finding lines that you already really like in your ear and then just transcribe that little bit, not the whole solo, and then trying to apply it directly uh, with a tune that you're playing or a tune that, that, that the person is playing, you know, try and figure out exactly where they are on the changes and then try and put it in somewhere. And, and then, you know, you start building, building your own vocabulary by connecting your own lines that you already have or other transcribed lines with the ones that you're transcribing now. I hope that is helpful and resourceful. <laughs> and if you guys have any more questions, please uh, DM me on Instagram at rfdjazz or at Sios Music on Instagram uh, for their account and uh, I'll be seeing you guys soon. Also, my discount code is still up for my signature mouthpiece, right here, uh, the Ryan Devling signature. Um, I I'm actually playing a nine star right now, really liking it. Um, the piece is great. If you use my discount code Devlin Sios in all caps, uh, you'll get 10% off any mouthpiece in the store, not just mine. Uh, so go check that out and uh, play a Sios. I love them, they're great. All right, I'll see you guys later, peace. <laughs>